Aloha my kako. A Koma Mighty Curtain Call. A program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. The annual Hui Solo Show opened on May 27th and will continue until July 22nd. Presented in part by the Hawaiian Tourism Authority through the Community Enrichment Program, the featured artists are Nancy Young and Terry Lopez. Ms. Young is a new artist to me. I was shocked to see she is an octogenarian. I asked her how I could not have come into contact with her work, and she told me she withdrew from exhibiting in the 90s, and now she is back, and how delighted we are she is. She is showing a wide range of work in a singular media, that of colored pencil. There is a series of digital prints with colored pencil and fascinating stories attached to them. These are like super enhanced prints because she has colored each of the images above the stories. Here are several, and you'll see many classical subjects. Next, she has what appears to be a large sketchbook of 12 works called Bare Essentials, consisting of colored pencil sketches of men and women, mostly nudes, and then she has digital prints of things like a laptop, bike helmet, a clog, wristwatch, cup of coffee, and other items these people consider essential. These are beautifully rendered and thoughtfully considered. Then she presents Martha was a friend of mine, an enlarged graphic story about her chicken friend Martha. It is a poignant story about a creature we don't necessarily appreciate from a real chicken lover. Now we have along the yellow brick road, dreamer, coward, fool, heartless, artist pursued by Cali ink and colored pencil. This is a profound image which shows Greta Turnberry as Dorothy with a bullhorn, the former president as the cowardly lion, the tin man as artificial intelligence, and Alfred E. Newman, the mascot of Mad Magazine, as the scarecrow. On his hand is written, not worried, going to Mars with Elon. This is a clever and heartwarming take on his model, What Me Worry. It also shows Ms. Young with Martha on her shoulder, whispering into her ear, cluck them, with a coast of interesting images inhabiting her head. And we have the goddess Kali, sporting a skirt of arms representing everything from poverty to health. It is a work that grabs the viewer not only for its skill, but also for what it is saying. Finally, we come to the large ink and acrylic ink murals. There are three, and they are 10 by four. This section is entitled, Whatever Happened to Dick and Jane? There is so much in these murals, it's impossible to discuss everything. So here are personal highlights. Mural one is called, Into the Swamp, Run for Your Life. It depicts a naked, recently defeated prevaricator president being pursued by denizens of Bruegel's The Blind Leading the Blind. Behind this group is a young African-American athlete holding a no clothes sign. We see Lady Liberty exiting stage left. In her place is a Girl Scout holding high a cookie with a horoscope on it. And then there is Alfred E. Newman without his gap tooth and a hairdo reminiscent of the former liar in chief's elaborate comb over giving a shaka and on his arm it says, no worries. In mural number two, Sleeping Beauty at the Dump, we find Lady Liberty cupped lovingly in the hands of a gorilla who is covered with undersea detritus, wearing heart-shaped spectacles. There is a wave reminiscent of the great Japanese artist Hokusai. The dump is filled with unusual items such as signs for fried chicken and Jesus is coming soon. Mural four, along the Dharma Trail, a sleeping Buddha, one step forward and two steps back. This one has Polynesians as well as many animals in the center is the Eye of Providence, which you may remember is on the seal of the United States and on the $1 bill. So now you ask, where is mural three? Well, the Hui couldn't fit it in. So you can see a photo of it and a description on the wall near where Martha is a friend of mine hangs. I hope to have the opportunity of viewing it in person in the near future. Ms. Young's exhibit is one of the most unique I have seen at the Hui since Kudra Clover's show. The variety she displays is beguiling. Her stories are endlessly fascinating, and she has a great sense of humor, no doubt nurtured by Mad Magazine. Her skill cannot be denied, and I guarantee you, you will spend a good deal of time enjoying these colorful images from an artist who has been in the Hollywood graphics industry, a self-taught sailor, a successful businesswoman, 
and a teacher of graphics and video at Lahaina Luna High School. She has a lot to say and a most unique way of saying it. The contrast between the two galleries couldn't be more stark, and yet they work. Terry Lopez is a well-known Maui artist whose work is seen in most of the juried shows on Maui. She does encaustics and oils. Her exhibit, All Oil on Canvas, is called Contemporary Hawaiian Visions, visions of where we lived and how we played. Her visions include two small impressionistic works about the beach, Keep Walking, Can't Sit on the Beach, and Footprints in the Sand. Then a very large canoeing painting of open ocean paddlers, and a small one entitled The Race. On the opposite wall are black and white photos of the inspiration for this exhibit, canoe traveling, fishing and racing, and early plantation homes. These plantation home paintings are done of homes from the 20s and the 30s. They are striking in the purity of their color, and they have elements that will cause the viewer to wonder. In Blue Window, a ladder appears to be suspended in the air. Ms. Lopez told me it is an A-frame, but given the perspective, you should be able to see the other side. In Makawao Town, there is a red splotch in the corner of one of the windows. I asked Miss Lopez about it, and she told me it was to balance the red in the roof. The same goes for the blue in the doorway, that is to balance the green. This work is simultaneously one and two dimensions, and the building appears to float in the air. As a compromise with her husband, who thought Poli Poli Home needed someone at the picnic table, she put the tail of a surfboard under the house. This one has a splash of contrasting light green on it for no apparent reason. Yellow Wall, Hali'i Miley, Camp Home, 1920, is Hopper-esque because of the bright colors and the shadows. The starkness of the black windows forces the viewer to contemplate what is going on here. Is this place abandoned or inhabited? This is Hawaiian House with Outrigger Canoe. It is in the entrance to Ms. Lopez Gallery. In this one, the house and the canoe vie for the viewer's attention. They are the dominant elements in this work. The most realistic work is Kauai Plantation Home, 1930. But Ms. Lopez isn't going for realism. All of these homes tell us little about the inhabitants. They all have black windows and doors that prevent one from entering or seeing what is inside. I'm certain this was a conscious decision on the part of Ms. Lopez, who wants the house to be the star of the show, and it works beautifully. Only Hawaiian House with its canoe and Poli Poli House with its picnic table give the viewer a hint of human activity. Ms. Lopez has taken everyday scenes and given them a surrealistic touch. The yellow wall and the blue window are two that I cannot get out of my head. The Hui no Yao has once again mounted an outstanding solo show, which deservedly brings attention to these two fine artists. This show continues until July 22nd. It is open Wednesday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's a video walkthrough with each of the artists being produced. Look for it soon on the Hui website www.huinoyao.com. Admission is free, but donations are greatly accepted and encouraged. Go see this show. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho!